everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am Eric and we are riding dirty and today we are still on the lockdown of social distancing. Today I figured why not build a kicker ramp and a landing. So that's what we're gonna do today. So let's check it out. So as you can see behind me, I have a plethora of wood because my best friend works in construction. So he builds houses and every time he has a bunch of extra wood, he's like, hey, come pick this up. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna build something out of it. But now I have all this wood. So now we're gonna build a ramp. So I drew up a design based on what I saw on the internet. I saw a bunch of different people who built kicker ramps and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do something pretty similar, but I usually go my own direction just like I did with the uh, manual machine. So here's my plans, really rough estimate. I'm not doing anything crazy. I'm not trying to go to the moon, so I don't need to be really precise. I'm just gonna, you know, basically do some simple math and figure it out from there and that's about it. I mean, you don't really have to do anything really fancy. I don't think my dad, when he was a teenager, was worried about the measurements of anything when he was building a ramp for himself to jump over things. The most important part to me right now is building the ramp, but also building a landing. That way you can essentially have a double made of wood that you can move anywhere. It's portable. That way you can spread them out so you can have bigger gaps and then you can learn new tricks. You know, it's just more versatile in my opinion to be able to have a landing instead of just launching and landing to flat. It'll help you get better. So, you know, so when you go out to like jumps, you know, on a trail, you'll be able to go, okay, I can, I can picture this in my head and measure it, you know, and measure what you're doing, you know, with the two jumps, with, with a jump and a landing. So then you can see, okay, I'm going five feet, 10 feet, 20 feet. Just makes sense to have a landing in my opinion. Also with my landing, I'm gonna make my landing a little bit wider. So basically what I wanna do is have a kicker jump that's at least three feet wide and a landing that's at least four feet wide. I want to make the kicker, I think, at least six feet long from beginning to end. And then on the landing, I want to do either six feet to eight feet. You know, that way you have a good landing. So it just makes it a lot easier. And it gives you a little bit more confidence to know that you have a bigger landing to, you know, land on rather than going, oh, I, la I ran out of landing and now I crashed. No fun. All the pieces of wood that I have back here are two by sixes. So what I'm going to do is cut all these two by sixes lengthwise in half and those will be my braces for the ramp themselves. So two feet's kind of big. <laughs> it's bigger than I thought it would be. Not that it's an issue, I just, it looks way bigger when you're making a ramp compared to just looking at two feet. All right, it looks a little bit smaller now, but it went from that to that. 
That's not so bad. All right, so it's done. I just hit it a couple times. It's pretty gnarly. <laughs> it's such a, it's kind of big to huck to flat, but I'm gonna build the kicker because this is the landing. I'm gonna build the kicker next. I think I'm gonna build the kicker a little bit shorter. It's gonna be cool. So what I'm doing right now is building the transition for the kicker. And all I did was I cut a piece of wood right here like this. And I have two screws, one screw over there, one screw over here for a six foot ramp. And then I'm going to take this piece of wood and flex it until I have it exactly where I want it, or at least what I think is right. So what I'm doing is just marking where I think it should go to see the transition because then I'm going to drill a screw in right here and then draw the whole line. All right, so our transition sides are done. It's long, but I want it to be long so that when you roll up to it, it's a smooth transition and you get a nice jump out of it. So there it is. It's like six feet. Let's get the center planks done and then put it together and put a piece of plywood on the top and have a kicker and a landing. I had to put a hoodie on because it's kind of cold over here in my great state of Arizona, northern Arizona. All right, here we go. Let's spread it out. All right, so what I did was the kicker is 18 inches tall, about six feet long. I, I think it's about six feet long. Uh, and then the landing is two feet tall by about five and a half, five and a half feet, I think. I don't, I don't remember, but there it is. It's pretty cool because now you can practice your doubles. Um, I made them about three and a half feet wide too. So that's three and a half feet wide, that's three and a half feet wide. I like having jumps that are a little bit wider because it helps you kind of gauge what you're doing and it gives you room for error. You know, when you're out there in the dirt jumps, there's not really room for error. Okay, so it's the next day. The kicker ramp is awesome. It's such a fun tool to practice on, but I decided to add uh, a little bit of a brace in the center right here, as you can see. And this is gonna help out to make sure it does not break. 
you know, I want to make sure that it's pretty sturdy. So now we should be good. As soon as our social distancing is over and we're able to get back on the trails, I'll be back out there doing my progression, making my videos about getting better at jumping and all that good stuff. So until then, I'm Eric from Riding Dirty. Remember, start small, go huge. And if you like what we do here on the channel, hit that subscribe button and also hit that like button. Thanks for watching.